Welcome to the Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Elaine, it's a real pleasure to have you. Let me introduce you. You are an AT&T Product Marketing Director. I'll ask you what that involves in a minute. And it says you came from a very poor family in Hong Kong, and then you moved here in 1980, came to the Lord in 1981, married to Dominic, your husband, yes. uh, and you met him at Cornell, and then you did uh, master's work at Princeton, and you founded a ministry called Call to Work in 1996, and uh, and you've won all kinds of awards that I could just go through, but I'll I'll, I'll skip. Could yeah, skip those. yeah, but so Elaine, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and talk uh, initially to us about where you grew up in Hong Kong. Sure, glad to be here, Dr. Bach. It's, it's a such pleasure. a privilege to be in DTS. Just my dream to be able to take class here someday. So I grew up in Hong Kong and came from a very poor family. We were homeless at one point. When I was a teenager, we immigrated to the United States, to the state of Maryland, as refugees. Mm. And I work as a waitress, and my parents work in the restaurant morning to night. And I couldn't really have gone to high school, mm. let alone college and graduate school. And yet, God changed my life when I was uh, a teenager, after coming to the States. He changed me from a troublemaker, believe it or not. <laughs> to a peacemaker, mm -hmm. and my life is just totally transformed. And he opened doors and miracles every day, pleasant surprises every day, that he allowed me to go to Cornell, where I met my husband for my electrical engineering degree. And then I worked for AT&T as a summer intern, and AT&T hired me as a full-time employee before I graduated from college, and then put me through graduate school in Princeton. Hmm. And the rest is history. I've been there for over 32 years. I literally started when I was a child. They have a children's program. So that was 32 some years ago. So it's been an amazing journey. And what do you do now for AT&T? So I'm a director in charge of our product marketing for some really cool leading edge product called Flexware. It's software defined network. So hmm. everything is going software. And AT&T consider ourselves as a software company. So it's really quick way of configuring the network and on demand easily for the customer. Now, um, it says you founded a ministry called Call, Called to Work yes. in 1996. Now, yes. I know you're enthusiastic about this. Very much so. So uh, tell us a little bit about that ministry. For sure. And I'll yeah. start with saying why I did that. Okay. And how many of you are working? <laughs> Most of us, right? And many of you are going to be pastors and ministers and missionary. And I just want you to know, and I'm sure you know that, where do we spend most of our wake hours? At work. And it's my passion that we really, truly take Jesus to work. In my office, there's an empty chair reserved for Jesus. I invite him to be part of my meeting and conversations, really allowing God to show up in every meeting, every decision. It's been amazing. So in the 90s, AT&T is very big with employee resource group, which is awesome resources. So we would have Asian American group, African American group, and so forth. And then we would have annual professional conferences, and I would be speaking about career development and such. And then I said, what better way to empower and develop us to be better workers and managers than our Christian faith. Why couldn't we have a Christian professional development conference? We do have Bible studies at AT&T all my 30-some years of Korea. Hmm. Every location I've been to, and we moved from New Jersey to Dallas, at every single location we have Bible study at lunchtime and prayer meeting at lunchtime. Hmm. And yet, we don't really have a professional development conference. So I started that in 1996. In many ways, it's ahead of its time, right? Mm -hmm. So last year we had the Faith at Work Summit, mm -hmm. and the title was 2.0. Mm -hmm. So this is like 21 years ago when it was 0.0. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> so that was my passion. I am so big in encouraging people to really take Jesus to work. And oftentimes we think of the workplace and we call them the mission field as if we're going to you know, hold the Bible and pound people's head and they believe in Jesus. That's not what we're paid to do. Mm 
right? at and pay me to be an effective worker, leader, and manager. So we need to be faithful to what we are called to do. At the same time, while we have opportunity, we can share God's love and the gospel. So to me, the workplace isn't just a mission field. It's also where we're going to share and be a blessing to other people, but we are also the training ground where God equip us and train us and pour blessings into our work life. So we receive blessings as we're being trained and also be a blessing to other people in the now, mission field. How, uh, how have you translated this into communicating to to churches and that kind of thing about what it is that you do. Yeah. And you're at Northwest, right? Northwest, Northwest Bible, Bible Church, yeah. yes. And yeah. my pastor's wife's over there. Okay. So now you have to be careful what you say. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good point because it's a journey. For all the churches that we've been associated with, as big as we are doing these annual call to work conferences and have speakers from all over the country, I intended not to invite pastors mm-hmm. or seminary professor, no mm-hmm. offense, but we invite <laughs> practitioner, people who work in the yeah, we don't real work. world. <laughs> Different kind of work. <laughs> so I would have White House staff, the person who started the Bible study in White House and the director of Mint and various um, executives from different companies. So as big as we are in doing conferences and the church support us nominally, it's still a journey to really get the pastors and the deacon board to fully recognize the need of really integrated this ministry into the fabric of the church. Because it's not a standalone workplace ministry. The model that we're promoting, it really cuts across whether it's your worship, your missions, or your small group. That it's a ministry that's integral to the church ministry. So we try to partner with the churches, and every church is at a different journey, different point. Different point. So, um, so tell us some of the things that you do in these, in these meetings that you have and the conferences that you have. What, what's involved in that? What are you encouraging people about? Yeah, so let me just kind of read our mission okay. statement, what Call to Work is intended to do. We want to edify and expand the kingdom of God around the world by equipping and mobilizing working Christians to be spirit-filled ambassador for Christ in our everyday life. Mm. So our conference gathers speakers from all walks of life with very practical topics. Work-life balance, how to be a light in the workplace, how do you deal with politics and people, and very practical topics from people from all titles and responsibilities. In fact, one year, some of you may know, we're dating ourselves, back in 2000, Fortune magazine, the cover page of Fortune magazine says, God is my CEO. Go back and look it up. So in that year, they interviewed various executives how God is their CEO, and one of them was also invited to our Call to Work conference. So the conference includes speakers, workshops, resources that we offer, and we have very practical, free resources on our website. And we also issue weekly email at uh, email distribution to uh, people with very practical devotions that you can learn and apply how to really integrate your faith in the workplace. So our conferences really gather speakers and people come together and learn. And we do also hope for people to follow up. And we're working on having webcasts mm-hmm. and small group resource materials and also connecting with other ministries because there are other ma- many other workplace ministries that we could help promote their material as well, like the project Theology of Work. I saw Dr. Uh, Duke just came in, so mm-hmm. that's his project for sure. So uh, what's the website? Website's call to work.org. Very simple. Okay. Uh, call to work.org. And, um, and what, are, what are some of the key issues, specific issues that you, that you deal with? Or let me say it this way. What are some of the key challenges that you deal with in terms of the workplace? Just from a workplace perspective. Yeah. So there are always people challenges, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, there's no better place than being in the workplace to be disciplined in our spiritual training, right? It's like a pressure cooker, it's like a fishbowl. You're being mm-hmm. watched. So I hope and pray that we are not in the workplace as secret agents, 
that no one knows that I'm a Christian, you know, trying to hide our faith. Sometimes we may be concerned that if people know that I'm a Christian, they may set a certain expectation. What if I don't do well? What if I don't shine the way that Matthew 5.16 said, let your light shine before others so they can see your good deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven? And that's okay. So here's the challenge and a blessing for me, for my own experience. While it's challenging to let people know that you're a Christian in a natural way, at the same time, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit that I learn to live so many promises from the Bible, mm. like the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So many practical situations at work that you really need to practice love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And God give me the sensitivity to care for people, give me the courage to speak up, give me the wisdom to lead and influence, and give me the humility to apologize. Mm. And it's okay if we don't always make the right decision. It's okay we may not be patient all the time. And recently I apologized to my team for not being patient enough because we're working on a very intensive project. And that's what's amazing for us as Christian in the workplace, while it's challenging, at the same time, we're so blessed because we're not there on our own. The Holy Spirit is there with us every step of the way. You know, one of the points I like to make about Galatians 5 and the fruit of the Spirit is how relational that list mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It really is about how we interact with other people. God yes. equips us to interact with other people in yes. a way that uh, allows us hopefully to be a benefit to them as we as we serve them. Do you talk uh, any in your in your discussions about how to view the work itself? Um, in other words, how to think through um, what you're you're doing, whatever it is in the company. In terms of work discussion. Yeah, in other words, the value of work as work. For sure. Yeah. So work is more than a paycheck. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that I get paid too. So I just very passionate. Whatever you do, you've got to enjoy what you do. And I thank God it's Monday. <laughs> and people laugh at me. So most recently, it's actually pretty amazing that I got a chance to share my life story with my VP. In fact, he asked me to share because in one of the town hall meeting, he shared his own journey of adversity, how he builds resilience, and he opened up for the whole team and say, who would like to share the resilience story? So I share my little story of how my life was changing, living on the edge, and then 30 years later, living the American dream. So there was a car ride that got ordained and orchestrated that he gave me a ride to a train station. And he was really marveled at my story. And he said, can you tell me more? What's your turning point? So I'm invited <laughs> Thank to you share very much. Yeah. the question. So I share how my um, Christian faith really is my foundation. So there are many opportunities that we can share and also value work because God called us to do work with excellence, whatever we do, right? Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, do it as if it's for the Lord. That's why he's our CEO. He's our big boss. Mm -hmm. So at work... I just find it integral to our Christian faith mm. and how God built me up as a servant leader of integrity. And I speak on it, I teach in many different forums, both Christian and non-Christian um, organizations. And that all that God has equipped me in the last 30 some years is not for a secular purpose. Is for a sacred purpose while contributing to AT&T, to the business, at the same time builds me up as a better leader and how can I use all that investment to help other people as well. So it's just been really integral life. So it's not like your calling, your career, and your community in three different sectors and compartmentalized, but really it's an integral life. All that kind of come together for God's glory. Now, we have microphones, this is our custom, so if you have questions for Elaine, do come to the microphones and, and ask. Let me, let me ask you another question, and that is, um, uh, are, are, you a, uh, are you a manager of people? In other words, how many people do you manage at your work? So I manage a small team directly, mm -hmm. but I have a large kind of a cross-functional team because mm -hmm. of multi 
um, organization partner together. In fact, another very important area is that we build good performance at work and your leadership recognize your strength. Mm -hmm. So most recently, I was pulled from my regular job to put into a burning platform, a very serious project need, mm. because my leadership recognized my strength that could be best use mm. for that project. And with that, I'm able to really set up what's called a war room to really execute a serious set of initiative and priorities across multiple organizations. Mm -hmm. So that's a large team to lead them. Okay, so um, what challenges do you find being in the workplace uh, as a woman? And I'll tell you why I asked this question. We um, uh, the, one, of the, one of the churches that I'm involved with has done a series on places and spaces mm -hmm. and that people find themselves in. And in the midst of doing the series with the animation and everything, um, the two roles that women were, were given were wife and daughter. And, uh, and, I, and I thought of you. Uh, I, I thought, of, well, I'm, I, here's Elaine. She's, she's in the workplace. So what... What would you communicate, particularly to pastors, to, uh, uh, to men, about uh, understanding what it is to be a woman in the workplace? Sure. So I'm definitely a wife, very blessed <laughs> wife for 31 years, and I'm a mother of two children. And for me, as an engineer back in the 80s, again, before its time, and being Asian in particular, that's additional mm -hmm. kind of a challenge for me. And with a baby face and young looking and short Asian woman engineer in a very white dominant, male dominant environment wasn't easy. So I've gone through many challenges. And I would convey to pastors to really give full support to us women in the workplace as much as, or perhaps even more than to the men. Because you know, we all wear multiple hats, right? Mm -hmm. As much as we work full time, perhaps harder and longer hours than the men, because we always are expected quite a bit. At the same time, we have home duties, right? Mm -hmm. The cooking, which I enjoy, the cleaning, and taking care of the children. So it's a lot that we juggle. So I encourage the pastors and all of you future pastor and minister to really give that extra support for the women in the workplace. And I am very proud to say, I think women, as you mentioned about people relationship mm -hmm. and not to be stereotyped or anything, I think women are better at dealing with people relationship <laughs> than men in general. So I think mm -hmm. we are naturally good leaders that way. <laughs> Just like the women's conference, which I'm glad that I was speaking at last year too, right? Women, it's all about influence. So mm -hmm. that's what leader is, to mm -hmm. influence others. And so, so what does your job actually involve? What do you, what do you, what do you do from day to day? So, day to day has been very intense for the last two and a half months since my leadership put me into this war room. I'm thankful to say that after I got involved, we were able to triple the volume of product that we were able to deliver from one month to another, and I orchestrate a lot of issue resolution in terms of a reactive solving problems. Mm -hmm. At the same time, identify what are some root causes and how can we have preventive and proactive solution to avoid those problems. Hmm. So it's been a very exciting journey. And, and how much pressure is there on you for, and this is general in the workplace, particularly for people involved in sales, um, how much pressure is there on you to, to make sure the product gets sold? Because you do marketing, right? Product delivery. Product delivery, mm -hmm. okay. And so, uh, d do you work under that kind of pressure? Are there very much so. volume uh, volume expectations and that kind for of thing? For sure. So there's high bar that's being set for the business. This is a leading edge product for AT and T, and in fact, as we speak. These next few days, you see at least five or six press releases about Flex, where you can look it up. So it's a lot of pressure, a lot of attention, all the way up to the chairman. Weekly review on how we're doing. Hmm. So I lead this war room with multiple organizations coming together, how to orchestrate and lead and motivate and mobilize the team to deliver. So a lot of pressure. And I have to admit, I'm quite a bit of a workaholic. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, I do try to balance with my family and the ministry. And there are evening hours and weekend hours that we'll have to fight some fire drills and deliver for the customer. So it's a lot of pressure. Now, I know you're also, as we've mentioned, involved at Northwest. What do you do there? I, 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 I got a little bit of a hint of, about what you do, but yeah, what, what do you Yeah, so do other than the workplace ministry, I'm also a Stephen minister that we care for 
the needy one on one. Both my husband and I were trained as Stephen Minister when we were back in New Jersey. And I'm also a mentor for a small group of young women, uh, young mothers, and just like to sh do life and share life together. And I also participated with missions team. So another aspect of um, area I do is coaching a lot of young people speaking at universities like UT Dallas and SMU locally, and also at different states and overseas in China. So we had a missions team uh, over in China in the summer for a 10-day leadership camp for college students mm. where we use leadership as a platform to teach character-based leadership at the request of the government, which is pretty amazing. Mm. And using that, whether it's UT Dallas or SMU, then we can invite them to another ministry at the church and share more how the Bible really equips us with many life skills. So it's been an amazing platform using what we've done over the years to help share with other people. Now, are there particular challenges that the young people are consistently coming to you with, questions that they have about... Uh, uh, like I say, particular issues that, that, that you hear yes, yourself? Yes, yes. So they a lot of issues with um, searching for jobs, right? Career development, which is one of my passion. And especially we minister to international students. Hmm. They struggle a lot with soft skills, which the universities do not usually teach. Mm -hmm. So that's why our platform is so attractive. Mm -hmm. um, people skill, leadership. How do you prepare for interviews, life skill, finance management? So our fellowship called Servant Heart is very much tailored to that. It's not a typical Bible study, but it's really centered around life skills. And if any one of you are interested, it's always conducted in English. We need coaches. Um, some of the DTS students actually have visited us where we would have bi-weekly topics, like last week was on time management. Mm -hmm. And there are other topics, how do you find the perfect job? How do you find the perfect mate? How do you manage your finance? Very practical topics, but all based on the Bible. Oh, very good. So um, uh, so what, what do you hope to achieve with, uh, with your, your ministry? What's the, what's the ultimate goal that you have for, for Call to Work? For Call to Work is really to equip leaders to really share this vision and encourage workers, whether you're managers or employees, to take Jesus to work. Mm -hmm. And really thank God it's Monday. How do you experience that every day? To be a blessing and to receive blessing from God. And I just cannot imagine a day going to work or any day that I live without involving and engaging and inviting Jesus and letting him show up in every aspect of my life. And also expand our ministry network, not just our own little corner of core to work, but really partnering with other ministries so that we can all join forces to advance God's kingdom in the workplace. Now, you mentioned that you came as a refugee from Hong Kong to the United States. Um, and did you come to the Lord at college or was it? Or, at college. And, and how did that happen? Wow. So I was born as, a, you can tell, a high achiever, type 8. <laughs> I believe everything, you reap what you sow. You've got to put in your effort to reap your results. So I really find believing in a God as more like a fiction and a fairy tale. Hmm. As much as my parents put me in a Christian school, not because they're Christian, just because those schools are better, and I mm -hmm. studied the Bible for good grades mm -hmm. and for rewards and awards. So I really always doubt the Bible. And also, as you know, I study engineering, so everything needs to be proven. Hmm. QED. You've hmm. got to explain and demonstrate. And I cannot see God. He's not visible. So what's remarkable is that God allow a family to immigrate from Hong Kong to the United States. And if I were to be in Hong Kong, there was an article that um, talked about my story, talked about how I was like a frog inside a well. Hong Kong's very crowded. And Dr. Bao, mm -hmm. you've been there, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was really very myopic, like a frog in a well. And yet when God orchestrated and allowed us to come to the States, he really put me out of the well into the light and see how big this world is. And my friends in Hong Kong said, oh, they'll pray for me. And I said, how could you pray for me? You don't even know what it's like in the United States. Unless the God that you pray to can exceed time and space. And that really 
was the aha moment. Mm. I was so arrogant and so self-centered and so self-confident that I could do everything on my own. I realized that I cannot exceed time and space. Mm. But God can. And that really opened my eye. And God really showed me how I was so limited. I was such a troublemaker. And I can tell you stories of my troublemaking days. And then changing me to a peacemaker. Well, we don't want to ruin your reputation. So I think. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. It's all God. Mike. I was wondering if you ever had any situations in the workplace where your workplace values and maybe what, a, what your company was aiming for conflicted with your faith and how you navigated that? For sure. There are many occasions like that. And it's not easy. So we were asked, for example, we are going through a lot of reorganizations and changes right now. And it's very hard to tell people that they are being let go. And the most important is to take care of the people. Because really, it's all about the people. Without people, you cannot deliver anything. So there are times that we could be asked to make some very difficult decision. But in general, I have to say, AT&T is a top-notch ethical company. We have very strong code of conduct and very strong in integrity. So it's really not as challenged in making unethical decisions. Not much of that, really. But really more dealing with people difficult issues and um, telling people that they need to improve areas that they need to uh, work on. And that's also good leadership, right? How can we give feedback that would build people up? So that's actually a key part of management, isn't it, is, yes. is getting people to, um, to grow and improve. Um, uh, so I have, uh, well, there's another question, so I'll, I'll save mine. Go ahead. Um, yes, my mother owns her own company in Bryan, Texas, mm -hmm. and um, as her son, I would love for Jesus to be an even larger part of her company. So how, how, do, how does your ministry meet companies where they are at to uh, kind of create this work culture in which Jesus is uh, the key integral part? That's awesome. In fact, one of the ministry I'm on the board with is about to launch character-based leadership resources for corporations and really targeting small business like your moms. So we could help offer resources to them and we're talking about webinars, how can they really integrate the value into running the business, as you know very well, Chick-fil-A as an example, in and out and the many business that really operate in the principle of the Bible and how God multiply and bless using that value. So we love to help. Thank you for that question. So, uh, so I was going to ask you in managing people, um, how do you deliver? How do you deliver challenging news? Um, what does that involve? So, one of my favorite topics that I speak on is effective communication, mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of skill. First of all, when you have to deliver difficult news, it's very important to. It's very important to have strong relationship first. Because everything builds on the foundation of having a good relationship. When you have a good relationship, any news that you deliver, it's easier, especially bad news. Mm -hmm. So when we have to deliver bad news, we find a way to build them up. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you have to think about what's in it for them and think from their perspective not so much from my perspective, right? So how is this communication, how is this news going to help them to be better? Mm -hmm. So as many of you probably heard about a sandwich skill, right? You start with something that they're really good at, encouraging them. I really like how you are very committed and really focused in delivering this project. And, and don't ever use the word but, because <laughs> but negate everything else you said. <laughs> and I see that there's an opportunity for you to focus instead of doing too many things and spreading yourself thin, but focus on and digging deeper to follow through so that you don't drop the ball. And I think you're going to be even a better project manager and wrap it up with another positive assurance and affirmative statement, as an example. But think from their perspective. And that's what we as Christians are so empowered and enabled. And that's what servant leader of integrity is all about, where it's not about me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. It's about others. It's other-centered leadership and management style. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, so I was raised by a woman CFO, so I love hearing you speak, and I love hearing all the things you've done in your career. Um, what would you say, uh, a lot of my friends from college you know, aren't believers, and they are rising women in the workplace. What would you say to those women that receive more dignity in the workplace than they do in the church? And when they, when they show up to the church, they aren't given the same level of value, their intelligence isn't recognized, their leadership isn't recognized. Um, and for me, my identity is already in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear those attacks, mm -hmm. I have this foundation, but mm -hmm. what would you say to women that are trying to seek him out and don't yes. already have that? I love that question. As I mentioned earlier, your calling, your community, and your career is not a three-piece pizza slice in a pizza, but it's integrated. And I have a slide to show all these three circles merging. So our identity is defining Christ. And at the same time, as we develop our career based on our passion and our calling, all that, that we earn and the dignity and the contributions and the skills that you build up, I encourage us to apply them in the ministry. Not for the sake of seeking approval, but for the sake of really using your skills and I do that with my church ministry. Over the years, we've taught children, teenagers, now with young adults. And that's where the integration comes in. You don't shift gear from one setting to another. You live an integrated life. And that way, your value, your contribution, your talent, right? Our time, talent, and treasure are fully used in living John 10.10, 10, an abundant life at work, in the church ministry or in the community. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's an important question. We, um, we interviewed a whole series of millennial women uh, about a year ago, right after the election, and spent two and a half hours with them on a Sunday afternoon, Bill Hendricks and I. Mm. And I asked them, what two podcasts could we do for you when we were mm -hmm. all done? And one was on infertility, and I thanked mm. them because I said I never would have thought mm. of that. And then second one was um, to uh, ask the question, why should a woman participate in a church when she's able to function one way in the workplace and seems to be limited in the way she functions in the church? And part of what we tried to say in response to that was there are all kinds of opportunities for women in yes. the church. Yes. Uh, but the church also needs to be affirming about, about those opportunities exactly. as well. Exactly. I just couldn't emphasize enough. It's not about sacred and secular, but it's really integral because we have so much training and experience from work, getting organized, executing, and working with people. Those are valuable in the church ministry. Mm -hmm. That it's really helping to advance the kingdom. And all that is neutral, but God, when you put it in God's hand, it just becomes such a powerful instrument. Mm -hmm. Next. I sold my manufacturing facility to come to Dallas, and one thing I noticed that tends across the other business owner or manager to a pastor is some isolation feeling hmm. because of the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to some like mentoring situations that maybe mentored you in the beginning that have helped you? just in your process of... Uh, in terms of mentoring, the importance of mentoring? In yeah, maybe the point that you were mentored from others is where I'm... Oh, yeah, I'm definitely. So I really benefit from having many mentors, both at work and in the ministry. And we do, and I speak a lot about mentoring, and I mentor many other young professionals and young parents. So I think mentoring is powerful because we're sharing life together, and we're hoping to share lessons and mistakes that we've made that you wouldn't have to make. So I've learned from my mentors from all perspective, and I came up with an acronym called CRIMSP. I'm a big fan of acronym when you get to know me. Uh, CRIMSP, so C is a connector, someone who could connect you with some various opportunity, a connector. R is a relator, someone who would relate, and also be a realist and tell you like it is, not sugarcoating. So that's another aspect of a mentoring relationship. And the I is an industry insider. What is the next big thing? What's the killer app to tell you where to go next? And then M is a typical mentor who really, it's a great sounding board and sharing experience ahead of you that you might not have um, come across yet. 
And then P, it's a partner that you partner with a lot of your peers. And then S is some sponsor, like an advocate who's got a big picture, a few levels higher than you. So I am thankful to have a range of that network, and I call that kind of a circle of trust and that circle of influence that impact my life from both a manager leadership perspective and also as a mother and as a wife. And I'm able to kind of return and give back to other people in those similar roles as well. In thinking about mentoring, do do you seek out mentees or do mentees seek out you? Which 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 tends to happen? Both in both cases. There are some that are more structured mentoring program at work that they would assign us to a group of mentees. And there are some that are impromptu. Whenever I get to speak, people like to follow up from conferences and events, and then we'll form a mentoring relationship. And I've taken the class from Professor Susan on organic mentoring, right? Mm -hmm. So there's also the mm -hmm. um, organic evolving relationship. And they're all forms of mentoring. It's not fixated to say, oh, you have to meet once every month, or so it's depending on the program and based on need. So, so there are mentor programs in your in, company. In your company, yes. How do those many. work? So there are many circles. I mentioned employee resource groups. So there are many sponsored by the ELG. There are also some sponsored by the certain organization, and they would match a senior leader with the mentees who would sign up based on interest. I'm also active in some uh, nonprofit organization like Chinese Institute of Engineering, and we have mentoring program as well and do kind of a matching based on what the mentees are looking for and what the mentors want to offer. So in, in your company, the people who want to be mentored sign up for a mentee yes. program? Is that yes. how it works? Yes. So that, it's a very organized, structured program. Because what I'm getting at is um, sometimes I think People who people want a mentor, but they but they don't take the initiative to get a mentor. Right. If I can say it That's that way. That's right. That's right. And so we'll help them, uh -huh. facilitating that mm -hmm. and offering and make it easier. And it's probably more difficult to seek out someone to be your mentor. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of courage. But when we have a program like that, it's easier, more enticing. So that people can just easily sign up and we'll match them. So we've done mentoring circle where there's a one mentor to a few as a circle, or there's also one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So at and is very big on mentoring. Interesting. Huh. Okay, well, uh, Elaine, I want to thank you for... Oh, there's a, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi, Elaine. I'm um, so encouraged to see you here. You're speaking in DDS because uh, uh, actually, as an ancient people, I'm so encouraged to see God put you in such a high position in at and and also, more important is you are so influential Christian, Christian uh, here. So my question is, I want to ask this question for young professionals in our fellowship, in our church, because I know many of them, they are struggling, just struggling in their uh, career. Um, so uh, my question is, what is your some suggestion advices for young Christians who are working in America, especially our Asian people, Chinese people, uh, Chinese Christians. Thank you. Thank you. We go to the same uh, ministry and prayer meeting, so good to see you as well. And all that I shared in the last 40 minutes, it's about taking Jesus to work and integrating your faith in your daily life including work, and especially for work. And I just cannot tell you how many times I experienced God showing up. I, just amazing. It seemed like very simple who I scheduled a meeting with and when do I meet with who. When you look back, God's hands is all over our workplace as long as we allow him to be part of our daily life and really turn up the spiritual antenna and sense God's presence with us. So my encouragement and challenge to the young professionals is be aware and take Jesus to work and leave that empty chair for him and remind him. And every morning as I start work, have that prayer, very simple prayer, which is on our website, to pray for yourself, your walk with Christ, and pray for your boss, pray for your customers you work with, and pay, pray for your people. 
So it's not a job, it's a ministry. It's a ministry, absolutely. Yeah. It's not a job. Uh, we, we, uh, I'll never forget the story. We, we, in fact, we had Steve Ramsour do what you're doing with us now a while ago, and he was talking about thinking about retiring, and his job was wearing him down, and then all of a sudden he realized that the 4,000 people he managed, megachurch, um, were his flock. Mm-hmm. That's and right. it changed his whole approach to his ministry and That's to the right. way he went about his work. That's right. It's all about people business. Mm-hmm. God is in the people business. And we are privileged to do that, whether it's in a work setting, in a ministry setting, or in the community. It's all about building up people. And the church is in a position to come alongside yes. people in the pew who face this every day and encourage them in the midst of that. That's right. And that's really my challenge to you, all future people ministers and pastors be there with your congregation understand their need go into the workplace and support them and provide the resources and really integrate the workplace ministry not as a separate ministry but across the fabric of the church ministry how can that be included in every conversation in the message in the pulpit in the activities in the fellowship you know, I, I sometimes wonder when churches talk about, well, we need this evangelism program or this outreach program. And I go, God's already designed an outreach program. In the workplace. It's in the workplace. It's yes. where people already are. They're already out and about. And so so if you equip them for that for that role, you have your outreach program. We don't have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to get there because God has already woven Places. it into the way we live. So we'll say the work place is the largest mission field Mm -hmm. with the most largest number of missionaries, right? Mm -hmm. While we say that, I do want to emphasize again, not just about being a blessing and sharing the gospel, but be sure to experience God and receive blessing because He wants to bless you in the workplace. He wants to meet you where you are, and He has met me at every single situation. There was a year that I, as much as I love work and thank God it's Monday, there was a year that was a Sunday night blue challenge. Mm -hmm. Sunday night blue. Mm -hmm. I cried every Sunday night Mm -hmm. going to work on Monday because of certain challenges. And yet God saw me through. So be sure to see the workplace not a mission field only, but really also a training ground that God wants to bless you, equip you, and use you in a big way. Well, let's thank Elaine for his And I'll close this in a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for just the opportunity to reflect on the way you have designed our lives. Mm -hmm. And that uh, the nine to five space, Monday to Friday, is one of the aspects of that design. In fact, it's a big aspect of that design. And our prayer is, is that as we think about that as church leaders and as we think about equipping people for the calling that you've given to many who sit in the pew from week to week, that we would be sensitive to and enabled to minister to people in such a way that they are equipped uh, not just to serve within the four walls and the programs of the church, but they're equipped to live out their Christian lives in ways that are effective and that will impact the communities in which you have placed them. And we thank you for Elaine. We pray for her ministry. ask that you would be with her as she works with Call to Work. And there will be with her at our work at AT AT&T. We thank you for her taking the time to be with us. And we thank you for the many ways in which you bless us. Be with us now and the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Table Podcast. For more podcasts like this one, visit dts.edu slash the table. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well.